Hey guys, what is up? It is Dominic, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the future of High Level. Now, of course, if you're new to the channel, you have no idea what High Level is. It is the greatest all-in-one software platform that allows you to white label it and resell it for whatever price that you want so you can build up your monthly recurring revenue and actually own a software company. The technical term is SaaS, software as a service. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'll show you how you can get started today, get 30 days for free, get multiple courses, and even get invited to some private Facebook groups all for free. But with that being said, let's get right into the video. So after doing some research, I found Similar Web, and basically it's a site that tracks sites so we can kind of see how go high level is doing how it's doing against its competitors and you can get a good understanding of where it's going to be in the future but even if all of this information is false i'm still going to give my honest opinion on where i think high level is going where it was when i started which was about a year and two months ago and my future plans for the next year two years three years and beyond i think that's really important for all the new people coming in because one of the most commonly asked questions that i get probably on a daily basis is am i late to this trend and my usual response is what trend? I don't even think high level is trendy right now. I don't think it's anywhere near where it's going to be in the future. I still think we're in stage one. And with all these updates coming out in this quarter, I think stage two is kind of approaching. But first, let's break down the numbers. So GoHighLevel.com on a global rank is 19,241. That's actually not that bad. And its country rank is 6,165. But most importantly, its category rank. How does it rank against its competitors? How does it rank in its category, which is business and consumer services, digital marketing? And that rank is number 19, and I would love for that to be number one one day. However, I'm still satisfied. I think High Level is still satisfied with being number 19. I think it shows you that there's more room to grow. As you can see, we have 2.1 million visits, a bounce rate of 26%, and 15.44 pages per visit, which you can see again down here that we had 2 million in May, 1.8 million in June, and 2.1 million in July, which means it's showing a lot of consistency. I wouldn't even say crazy growth. It's not like May was 1 million and July is 2 million. It seems it's hovering around a pretty consistent number. Now here's where I think it gets very interesting and where my future predictions start to come into play. Check out this geography and country targeting map. 61.51% in the United States. The US holds a majority of high level users and high level searches, and it's not even close. And so why do I think this is really good for the future? Because high level knows this. They know this statistic, they know they're massive in the United States, and they know they wanna expand. And as soon as they start expanding, everything's gonna change, it's gonna get way bigger. I would say the number one issues with expanding right now are Twilio and text messaging numbers and translating high level into a different language. These are the two things that I see stopping people all the time who are in different countries who are trying to figure out high level for their city, town, country, state, whatever it is. I truly believe that once high level starts to buckle down with this, they start to figure out how to do text messaging in different countries at reasonable prices. They figure out the WhatsApp integration. They figure out how to do translations instead of having to use a third party app. Once these little issues are fixed, it's game over. Look at how much room we have to grow. The United States is not that big, people. We have the entire world to think about. And so it's really funny when I hear that from new users, they're like, Dom, this seems like, is it saturated? Are there too many people in the market? Can I actually do this? And I'm always like, wow, you need to look at the numbers, guys, because this is uh, mind blowing. I mean, there's so much room to grow. There's so many more people that could be on here. The last time I checked, there's under 20,000 users on high level. I mean, that's barely anything at all. Considering years ago, ClickFunnels had hundreds of thousands of users. I I just really think there's so much room to grow with high level and most of that comes from a geographical standpoint now here's something that i found super interesting and once again i don't know how real these statistics are but from my experience being an affiliate leader seeing my numbers on tiktok youtube how many affiliates i get and what age and what demographic i would say this is pretty accurate so the first thing is the gender distribution we've got 42 percent female and 57 percent male don't really have anything to comment on this pretty similar i don't think it affects the future of anything here but check out the age distribution how many we have in the 25 to 34 range and even how many we have in the 18 to 24 range. We've got young people hopping on. And what happens when the young generation really starts to approach a business model? It starts to trend. We saw this with Amazon FBA. We saw this with Shopify. We saw this with crypto. We have seen this time and time again over the last 10 years. Whenever these 18 and 19 year olds start making money online and they start posting about it, other young people will start to come in. They will start to talk about it as well. And I do not think this is a bad thing. I'm actually for exposure of high level. Now, could it be 
become saturated in the next few years because of this? Yes, it could. However, you can always see the brighter side of exposure. In my opinion, I always thought that if business owners saw high level and saw how awesome it was, they would be way more inclined to use it or use someone's white labeled version of it. I've had clients where I tell them straight up, I'm using high level. I show them high level videos. I show them how awesome high level is. I even show them that they can white label it. And just like any business and any boss and any business owner ever, they don't want to do the work. They just want to have the awesome system. So they'll make you do it. They'll pay you to do it. And that's why software as a service is so amazing. Everyone's always trying to hide high level. You're trying to hide your logo, hide everything about high level. Dom, you're talking about high level too much on TikTok. Everyone's going to know about it. Who cares? Exposure is good. Business owners pay more for the service than they do the product. For instance, if you're amazing at high level, you understand the tech really well. You understand how to sell it. You understand everything about high level. You can build websites in seconds, connect them to automations and have everything running smoothly. And let's say high level becomes the number one ranked in its space. So now you've got all these business owners, all these people talking about high level and you're amazing at it. How are you not going to be able to make money off that? How are you not going to be able to use that as leverage for a super popular product? In my opinion, you should be fine. So that's why I think exposure is good in this scenario. I think it's very new. I don't think there's that many people talking about it at all. For instance, I don't want to sound arrogant when I say this, but I was the first to ever blow up on TikTok showing high level and my TikTok numbers demolished any YouTube numbers that have ever been. No one on YouTube had ever reached a million views talking about high level. No one. It had never been done. And I have one single TikTok at 1.1 million views. So with one TikTok, I destroyed any YouTube number or any number that had ever been done on high level ever. And the reason I'm saying this is because that one YouTube video may have brought a thousand people in, but that's about it. It didn't bring in a million. It didn't bring in 5 million people. It didn't saturate the market. It did none of those things. If I went out on the street right now and asked a hundred people what go high level was, I'd have a hundred people go. I have no idea. I even think if I asked a hundred marketers, people that are in this industry, what go high level was, I truly believe that 25 to 50% of them won't know what it is. Now you can correct me in the comment section. If you think I'm wrong, if you think everyone's talking about high level and it's the main topic of discussion at all your dinner parties, then yeah, toss a comment, say you're wrong, Dom, and we can agree to disagree. But in my world where I come from, I'm like the only person talking about it, you know, in my town and where I'm from and on TikTok and all these things, I don't see that many people out there. There's only a handful of YouTube accounts talking about it. There's only a handful of TikTok accounts talking about it. And I know I talked about this earlier, but I want to take you on a blast to the past to when Shopify was the biggest thing around because that was when I was in high school and I thought it was the coolest, easiest way to make money ever. Little did I know it was incredibly hard and the profit margins were terrible and you needed a lot of money to do it. Even when they said, no, you don't need any money at all. It was a lie. But I'm going to talk about, about drop shipping all day long because I failed. However, that's not the point. The point was these huge, huge YouTubers were coming up out of nowhere. They were 16, 17 years old. They had the thumbnail that said how I made $50,000 in one month drop shipping at 17 years old. And they get one, two, three million views on a YouTube video, million views on a YouTube video. And it still took drop shipping two, three years to saturate. Even with everyone talking about it, millions and millions and millions of views, it still took years to saturate that market. Same goes for Amazon FBA. And that is my point. If you go on YouTube right now, you're not going to find viral high level videos. You're not going to find it because it's not that trendy. It's nowhere near where drop shipping was or Amazon FBA or retail arbitrage, Forex crypto. None of these, all these other videos on these business models are getting way more views or did get way more views in their prime. And if you're lucky, you'll find a pretty big high level video that has maybe 10,000 views, 10,000 views. The market is still very small, ton of room to grow. Do not think it's saturated. Do not think you're too late to this. Now we are at the competitors of high level. Where do I think high level is going in terms of the competitors? Now, these are obviously the competitors that similar web found. These are going to be tracked by category. They're not 100% competitors. Obviously up here at the top, we have ghlexperts.com. This is not a competitor of GHL. So we're going to skip that one. We've got discovermybusiness.com. I've heard about it before. I don't know too much about it. Looks like the rank is 5,800, but here we go. We've got SEMrush with 12 million monthly visitors and number three on the ranking scale. SEMrush is huge. Most of you have heard of SEMrush before. Obviously, they could be seen as a competitor, as well as HubSpot, the king, number one. We all know about HubSpot. Pretty much anybody in this space knows what HubSpot is, knows that it's probably the number one rebuttal you get when trying to pitch to somebody. They're like, oh, no, we already use HubSpot. Of course you use HubSpot. It's number one in the world. But where I think high level is going, where I think high level can 
beat HubSpot is the individualistic service aspect of high level, how you can go in there and build everything for them, how a client can actually have a relationship with the software that they use. The hardest thing for businesses that use tech is them understanding tech. They don't want to understand tech. A roofer wants to do roofing. A plumber wants to do plumbing. A real estate agent wants to sell houses. They don't want to do all this and they will pay someone to do it for them. And that's why in almost every video, I always tell you guys, just keep practicing, just keep getting good at high level and you will thank me later. I have almost never seen someone who is really good at high level, someone who could pass all the tests and still struggle getting clients or finding a way to monetize this. If you're good, you know how to monetize this. If you're good, you can help businesses. And so keep practicing, keep getting better, trust me. And then down here, we've got Black Swan Media, Bright Locals, Bai Fu, all these other ones. I think ClickFunnels should be on this list. Obviously, ClickFunnels kind of inspired GA. Gel. ClickFunnels was one of the more viral companies that I had seen in the past back when the digital marketing space was getting really, really popular. Pretty much everyone was using ClickFunnels. So out of respect, I will put ClickFunnels in this list. Do I think high level and ClickFunnels are comparable? No. Now here is something that is super interesting. The go high level top marketing channels, 76% direct. Now, if you see that and you're like me, you're probably thinking in your head, wow, nobody is promoting this. <laughs> it is not being promoted. The only people that are finding this are finding it directly or going to search. Look at this 3.67% on social. I'm just a random dude. Go high level. I've been out for four years before I went on TikTok and I was the first person to blow up on TikTok or even show any interest at all in high level on TikTok at all. And people really have the nerve to tell me I'm saturating the market. I'm showing too many people and I'm sitting here staring at 3.67% and I'm just like, really? I'm saturating the market? Me? With my little iPhone and my TikTok and my YouTube channel? I guess we can agree to disagree on that as well. Another thing that I would like to double check is 3% on referrals. Coming from an affiliate leader myself, I'd like to think that we are a little bit higher than 3.5%, but maybe it means something different on here. I'm not entirely sure. Once again, we're going off similar web. They look pretty legit, but I'm not sure. But I definitely do believe that most of it comes from direct and search. That I can believe because I don't think high level does marketing. I don't think they do marketing for themselves. And that's awesome. That leaves so much room for affiliates like me, but it just makes me think like there really is a lot of room to grow here. Like for instance, I've never seen a high level ad in my life. I've never seen one. Their YouTube channel is good. I love their YouTube channel, but it's catered for people who already are in high level who know about it. It's not catered for people who are coming on and trying to figure it out. So I don't know, guys, I'm looking at this 3.67% and I'm thinking to myself, I got to crank up my numbers. I got to start posting more on TikTok, running more ads, posting more on YouTube, maybe Instagram, start doing some more. I'd love for social to hit 50 15 to 20%. And that's another thing that I'd love to break down. Once social hits 30, 40% and it becomes one of the top marketing channels for go high level, that is when I will agree with all the people that think it's going to be saturated, think there's going to be too many people in this market selling SaaS. But if you sit here and tell me it is saturated and we only have 3% on social, I hope you realize the irony in that. And I hope you realize that you're wrong. And this doesn't really matter too much, but here are the top keywords for go high level, what people are actually searching. And I thought it was pretty interesting over here, organic versus paid. So obviously we have 85% organic and almost 15% paid. And I'm pretty sure the paid traffic is just Google ads. I've talked to high level before. I'm pretty sure they run Google ads. As you can see, if you type in high level, you will probably notice the little ad by their name, but I find it funny. Like I said previously that they're only doing 15%. They really are not pushing this. I think they're trying to perfect it. I think they're trying to add more. They're trying to get really, really good such a solid base that when they skyrocket this thing, it will be perfect and there won't be any issues. But I don't know. I don't work there. And here is our social media traffic. This site's really cool. I'll be honest. This is like my first time going through this similar web. And if all these numbers are anywhere accurate at all, I should do more videos on this because uh, what an awesome site. So we've got 43% on YouTube. YouTube, when I started, when I was first starting with high level about a year and two months ago, I didn't even know high level was talked about on anything else. I was on YouTube all the time. All the biggest affiliates that I learned from Christine Seal, Jason Wardrop, Mike Cooch, all these people that I was learning from in the beginning, they were all on YouTube. Every single one of them, they all had YouTube videos. I was going through them. I was studying like crazy. And then ultimately I ended up just doing my own thing, making my own channel about my own stuff, my own works, doing local outreach. And I think I really did it the way that it needs to be done. If you want to be a social media guy, if you want to be a content creator, if you want to be an affiliate leader, don't necessarily copy the best 
guess just adapt to your own situation, make your own videos. And you know, here we are four, five, six months later, I'm the number two affiliate in the world. And it's just absolutely mind blowing to think. So that being said, I am not surprised that 43% is from YouTube. And then of course, 42% from Facebook, because everyone joins Facebook groups. And that's where everyone learns about high level and they get like all the support and all the people come together and the communities are all built on Facebook. So that's not surprising either. I think it's interesting that they're both like super close. But here is what surprises me. We've got 3% on LinkedIn. I'm rarely ever on LinkedIn. So I'm not sure um, who's promoting it on LinkedIn. I'd love to see some posts about it. Who knows? Maybe it's the next big thing. I start getting on LinkedIn. And then of course, the reason most of you know who I am at all, TikTok has 2.61%, which is kind of depressing. I feel like it should have more. I mean, I've hit in total three, four million views from both of the TikTok accounts that I've had combined. So I feel like that alone should be more than 2.6%, but here we are. And then we've got Twitter and we've got other, which is probably Instagram, Pinterest, you know, stuff like that. So what this should stream out to you is either get on YouTube and join the trend or be like me and take a risk and try to get one of these lower ones a little bit higher. And this is not me saying, hey, be an affiliate like me. This is for high level in general. This is for your SaaS company. This is for whatever you want to do with high level, trying to get more exposure in the market. This is what I would do. This is what I have done and it's showing success. Now, with all that being said, I think it was really fun for me to go through the numbers, really talk about the future of high level, where I think it's going, why I truly believe it's not saturated at all, and why I don't think it will be for the next couple of years. When you start seeing YouTube videos with 1 million, 2 million, 3 million views, then you can come back and talk to me. But until then, it's not saturated. There's so much room to grow. You guys are still early to this. I promise. Don't get frustrated. Just work really hard. And just like any business, you'll start to see results. And if you stuck with me to the end of the video and you want to get a free extended 30 day trial, yes, 30 days with high level, you only get 14 days with me because I'm a special affiliate leader. You get an extra two weeks for free. So that is going to be in the link in the description below. And if you're still in the fence, you want to learn a little bit more about high level before taking the leap, check out my free course in the description below. Yes, completely free front to back, pretty much my life's work all given away for free. So please, go through that course and hopefully you will sign up with my affiliate link for the 30 days because I am currently number two in the world. I'm really trying to get to that number one spot. I know we can get there guys. And if you do become my affiliate, you get a second course completely for free. It is a white labeled onboarding that's going to help you onboard all of your clients. It can even be used to help you prospect and get clients. You will also get invited to both of my private Facebook groups, which are amazing. One of them has over 4,000 members in it, including the co-founder of Go High Level itself. And they are super helpful. Everyone helps each other out. We all answer questions all day long. It's amazing. You guys have to join that group. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed where I think the future of High Level is going. Of course, I think it's going to the moon, but you already knew that. Hopefully this opens your eyes and gives you a little bit more confidence on what you want to do and how you see your future journey with High Level as well. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.